to one of Britain's most ancient forests, the Forest of Dean in Gloucestershire. This rich habitat is home to a variety of birds, mammals, insects and plants. But until very recently, one important forest inhabitant has been missing. The wild boar was a favourite quarry for the royal hunt, but 300 years ago the last boar was hunted out. Just recently, they were reintroduced to the forest. No one knows for sure where they came from, but it's thought they may have escaped from a local farm. Six years on, and the boar are thriving. At this time of year, sows are out in the forest with their piglets, rooting for tender tubers and grubs, using their sensitive noses like small ploughs. The piglets will be fully weaned at four months old, but until then they're happy suckling from any of the sows in their group. These footprints here belong to the wild boar. Wild boar kind of walk down at heel a little bit, rather like a teenager that scuffs their heels. And because of that, the shorter dew claws, which are higher up on the foot, often show in soft ground. And that's exactly what we've got here. This track here is very large. You see the mark it's made as it's gone in? That's a very big animal. Maybe that's the boar. The tracks lead to this small depression at the edge of the forest that has collected water, creating a sticky mud bath. Well, it looks like they've been having a fine old time here. This is a wallow. No, uh, no prizes for guessing what they like to do there. I guess it's their version of a beauty treatment. They come in here and wallow and it helps to get rid of parasites from their fur. Quite a sight, isn't it? They've had a glorious time in there. The boar's recent reappearance is controversial. Locals are concerned that their relentless rooting in the topsoil for tubers and insects can damage the forest plant life. Whereas others recognize the constant churning helps to spread seeds and let the soil breathe. So the boar are actually contributing to the diversity of the forest. Personally, I think they're beautiful, but my chances of seeing them up close will be far better at dusk when the boar are more confident. I've enlisted the help of wildlife ranger Neil Solis, and for the last few nights, he's been laying out grain to attract the boar to a certain spot, where we'll return this evening, and hopefully I'll be in luck. While the day is still young, I'm making the steep climb to the top of a south-facing slope to try to find one of the forest's best camouflaged creatures. You see him just there. He's unaware of us. We're nice and gentle. You see him just there? The bracken on this ridge traps the heat from the sun, making it the ideal place for adders to bask and warm up in order to become fully active. Adders are distinctive for their black diamond pattern that acts as a warning. They are Britain's only venomous snake. They use their venom to catch and kill their prey, usually small rodents, but otherwise adders are not typically aggressive and will only use their venom as a last means of defence. Beautiful markings. They're lovely. As soon as they want to disappear, they slide into some cover and they just rely on their camouflage. It's so effective. The zigzag pattern on their back, just like the edge of a bracken leaf. They're such lovely creatures and they're so persecuted. People have this uh, deep-seated fear of snakes and you can understand that. But today, you know, we walk around with great big heavy boots on. We're much more of a threat to the snake than the other way around. This rich natural habitat wouldn't be here if it wasn't for man-made industry. Both Lord Nelson and Sir Francis Drake had oaks planted here to provide the huge timbers necessary to build their ships. And the timber industry continues in the Forest of Dean today. Coniferous plantations 
sit alongside the older broadleaf trees, creating a rich and varied tapestry. This mixed woodland is hugely beneficial to one animal in particular. It's one of our most elusive and magnificent birds of prey, the goshawk, the phantom of the forest. Goshawks hunt amongst the open alleyways created by the deciduous trees. Their broad wings enable it to fly at high speed to catch its prey on the wing. But goshawks also take advantage of the denser coniferous woodland. Got all these beautiful larch trees, and it's likely that uh, the goshawks will put their nest high up in a tall one of these. You can see what a tangle it is, which gives them good cover. The twigs of the larch are excellent for locking together, so make good nesting material. Let's see if I can get a better viewpoint. Let's go back the other way. In the 1960s and 70s, goshawks were reintroduced from Scandinavia after relentless persecution drove them to extinction within the UK. Could hear the goshawk. There's a blue tit in the nest, stealing downy feathers. <laughs> Cheeky devil. And we've seen the female fly over, so I think she may well have spotted us. Obviously, it's not just me here, there's the crew and everybody. So we're going to back off now. I'm going to leave a wildlife cameraman here to see what he can get. This female is one of 40 goshawks breeding here in the forest. Across the country, there are now 400 breeding pairs. They're making a confident recovery, and as a top predator, their presence here reflects the general health of the forest. Spring is a great time for observing wildlife, as all the forest animals are out and about, taking advantage of the sudden abundance of food As the forest comes to life, there's ample opportunity for me too to forage and discover what's on offer. Today I'm going hunting for a salad. This little plant, and that's golden saxifrage. It's on the bitter side, but it's a, a nice addition to my salad. I'm going to collect a little bit of that. And this little delicate plant is my favourite British wild salad plant. This is wood bittercress. What I like to do is to keep this plant from flowering, keep chopping the flowers back, and then you get a, a bushy plant that's a little less bitter. Wonderful. Hope I can find some more. Although some of these leaves are edible, there are plants here that are poisonous and dangerous to eat. It's taken me years to be able to identify which is which, so be very careful not to eat any plants unless you're guided by an expert. Now this is one of the wild plants that Everybody really knows it's the, people call it wild garlic, I know it is ramsons. It's actually an onion. It's the wild onion, Allium ursinum. And just walking through this, you just get this garlic smell everywhere. And the way I like to use it is to take the flower bud and sprinkle them into the salad because they give nice color and a much more delicate garlic flavor. And they're really nice. This is what I'm looking for. This is the small-leaved lime tree. It's a tree that once was very abundant in Britain, but is much less so today. Um, but they're very delicate, and that's, I guess, our wild lettuce in a way, if you like. It's the equivalent of lettuce in a salad. Got one last wild ingredient for my salad, and that's a little bit of this cherry blossom. I don't want too much of this. It's got a little bit of cyanide in it, but it gives it a slight almond flavor. Very delicate, very nice. It's quite sweet. I think I'll put a little bit of tomato in and some oil. And there we go. Now that looks and smells absolutely wonderful. Well, I've enjoyed the walk, but now is the joy of the eating. Let's see how that is. Believe me, it's every bit as good as it looks. I love the forest. The more time I spend like this within it, the more connected to this secret world I become. 
500 years ago, three quarters of Britain would have looked like this. We're lucky that there are still places today where we can witness this incredible wildlife firsthand. Before I leave, I'm heading back to the area where wildlife ranger Neil Solis has been laying out grain to attract the wild boar. It's nearly dusk, the boar's favorite time to forage for food. And clearly, the grain is too tempting to resist. to live alongside it because I think we're going to see a lot more of these animals in the future. 